Mm. All right. So um, we learned about uh, the uh, uh, the conversation between a king and the holy monks. You read that? You have? Oh, you have not received that? Oh, yeah. After this, I will make sure to send you the uh, the book called the uh, the question of King Milanda. Hi, Becca. How you been, Becca? Hmm. Can you hear? Can you hear, Becca? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Sorry, I had it on the out for a second. Mm -hmm. So please remember this weekend, this Sunday, we'll have the um, Compassion Buddhist Sabbath celebration. We come, okay? Invite your friends to come. Okay, I'll be there. All right, so um, we change uh, the, uh, the format a little bit with it and with this first. Uh, and Steve? Can you read number eight, please? What Nakasena is the characteristic mark of reasoning and what the mark of wisdom? Taking hold is the mark of reasoning, cutting off the mark of wisdom. Give me an illustration. How do barley reapers reap the barley? They grasp the barley into a bunch with the left hand and with a sickle in the right hand, they cut the barley. Just so, O oh king, the recluse takes hold of his mind with reasoning and cuts of the defilements with wisdom. Okay. Continue. Yeah, that's okay. Can you summarize, please? I think he was just pretty much explaining how um, the reason one was, I guess, half and half at the moment. <laughs> and the reasoning and the wisdom, right? That's correct, what correct. So he gave an analogy like just flap the Bali, right? And that we would recently and cut up with the uh, the wisdom. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. If you look at this one statue, the uh, red wisdom Bodhisattva in the front. I think um, I don't know whether probably the right side. But usually he carry this wall, and it represent this wall of wisdom. He cut up in the uh, the department of the ignorance. Yeah, that is symbolic way. And uh, let go back. What's the reasoning? What's the wisdom in this field? Uh, what, what is the, the reasoning? Wisdom. Reasoning first in this field. What is that? What do you think? About reasoning. About reasoning? Mm -hmm. I mean, you need, you need, you need reasoning and you need faith and you need there's one other component mm. <laughs> um, to make the wisdom the wisdom body mm -hmm. yeah and uh, so to make the wisdom body the illustration is that you take you take all of those concepts mm -hmm. and then you remove anger, hatred, greed, lust, desire. Yeah, let, 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 let <laughs> Which ones am I missing? <laughs> yeah, let's say uh, if someone used to hold the, the gut because other people uh, have done wrong on them, right? That means resentment. So, how could we use reasoning and wisdom to transform that that type of resentment. And we know, right? If we don't let go of the resentment, it's just dangerous, right? Uh, one for day us, we blow so up. For us, mm -hmm. because then we continue to generate more 
negative yeah. or that is it mm -hmm. i don't know generate negative karma is the mm -hmm. right word but yeah so yeah. if you don't transform whatever suffering that is then you you're continuing your cycle of mm -hmm. um, generating bad karma so you're going to have to keep working on it so you get right in <laughs> so, yeah, may, it, may as well deal with it now. Yeah, if you have the resentment, right? You uh, pile up right? from layers to layers of those couple of resentment mm -hmm. we got to, to deal with. And one day, if we cannot handle, go up. So now, how can we use the reason, the reasoning and wisdom to turn from that, that resentment? And Stephen, you, you got the points. Now, how could we um, use reason and, and wisdom to transform the resentment then? How can we use reasoning and wisdom to cut off resentment, you say? Yeah, resentment, yeah. Well, um, just by thinking compassionately. Not easy. Yeah, it's not it's yeah. not easy, but it just takes time, of course, and a lot of time and practice. Um, and um, just everything that we have learned thus far about um, just letting go um, and being able to let go, I believe that's the only way that you can, you know, pretty much apply it to um, cut off, you know, resentment. So, mm -hmm. All right, Becca, how well, how could you use the reasoning uh, and wisdom to transform the uh, the resentment? Then, now, if someone give you so much hard times, if you have so much resentment toward that person, what to do then? What how could you reasoning and wis and use wisdom to um, to cut off or transform it? I. I really don't know. The only thing I would say is maybe you could put yourselves or yourself in their shoes um, to see why they're giving you such a hard time or why what they're going through that makes them so unhappy. And then if you can understand why they are the way they are, you might be able to let go of your resentment because you're not living in that part of your life. But I, I don't know. Vivian, you have any idea? Uh, if you have so much resentment towards someone else, how uh, could you use the reasoning and wisdom to transform it then? No. This is where I feel like I need a lot of help in is like having other people bring in different perspectives on what could possibly be reasons why it's hard for me to come up with like to like be like, oh, this is why they're doing this or like to think of all the possibilities because there's so many things that like that person could be going through um that like i usually lean on others to help me figure out why would they be doing this or like what possible reasons um and honestly like i don't know i just feel like life gives you the answers and like like you can see yourself in that similar position in um, like later on that week or something and it, it i don't know just being open to the idea that you could be them and like they could be you. Especially uh, like our supervisor, manager, whoever, right? If they give us hard time, and even they may not lay off us. It's a lot, yes. Yeah. So uh, just just for me, and I know I know this is maybe a more of a terrible practice, but um, I practice the uh, loving kindness twice a week and we go over the um, the meta the meta sutta and so for me transforming that a lot of that too is because in the sutta it says to forgive and then part of the the exercise is to um you know for those that are creating problems for you, you send them um, the offerings of maybe safe, maybe, you know, you send, you send them compassion. And so 
for me, that teaching and that practice, which I think comes from a very long list of um, <laughs> wise body, um, is a very clear way to mm -hmm. use wisdom and, and transform resentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, I have someone that I have a lot of resentment towards, and I've forgiven them many times over. Um, sometimes it's just you've got to keep forgiving and keep letting it go. And I have just kind of a perspective that my perceived wrongs are not about me, it's about them and their experience that they've gone through, and whatever they're doing is about them and not about me myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that that and it is a it is a more of a terrible practice. But the way the way that practice is set up, you start with yeah, you know. Okay, so yeah, you work you, you work your way up to those. <laughs> After mm -hmm. you've cultivated the, oh, that yeah. feeling, <laughs> you work up to it. Now, how, how about you? How you do um, with how, may, how you make the reason in the reason put? Um, I think that, like a lot of resentments are like stories we tell ourselves about the situation, and like having the reasoning to recognize that the story yes. is important, but then having the wisdom to believe it and trust it. Like to actually do work with that instead of just telling the story and it's still engaging with it. Mm -hmm. um, so recognizing it and trusting it and working with it is the reason to do it. Ben, do you follow our conversation? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how about you? How could you um, use your reasoning to, um, to deal with your envy or res resentment? And how could you use the wisdom to cut it up or transform it? Hmm. Okay, reasoning to get rid of uh, envy and hatred and what was that again? Yeah, resentment. Mm, and resentment. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. That's that's one that um. It takes it takes a lot of time because um, especially if you're if you're holding on to something a resentment from the past, somebody that has hurt you deeply. Or somebody that you've hurt, um, if there's been trauma, um, abuse, anything like that. So um, you you have to step back and see the the story as a whole, um, and uh, and learn to forgive, um, and let down your ego because uh, at the at the time that's uh, that's all that that's all that you knew, or that's all that that person knew. So um, that's all that I have. Okay. Uh, like you say, sometimes, right? If that person repeats the mistake rarely, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it power up, right? It power up that type of resentment. And not easy, right? Probably we may forgive them one time, two times, even up to 10 times, but the 11 times. You have to know <laughs> after the lesson. So again, well, is it well are you, but, and then if if that's something where it's somebody's wronged you ten times, like okay, what's the position you've put yourself in? You know, clearly that's a pattern they're going to continue mm -hmm. to follow. You're you're following the same pattern mm -hmm. too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if it's happened. To and um, Cho Hyun Trumpa Rinpoche, yeah, pretty very famous meditation master in the sixties. He uh, he has a very clear distinction about idiot compassion. That there's there's one thing to be compassionate and you know wish wish being beings well but then there's also there's a difference be, between being the the idiot by putting yourself in some sort of foolish or unwise mm -hmm. yeah so basically for the common people who may not know much about Buddhism right 
the it's not the easy one, but the the way that we can make the reason to cut up a trans from the envy or resentment is that as long as we hold on that kind of resentment, that kind of envy, jealousy, and so forth, we burn ourselves. Simple, right? We burn ourselves, we harm ourselves. If we have that kind of recognition, if we have that kind of reasoning, right? It's bad of us to use the wisdom. Okay, now the next time, yes, I know, as long as I still have that this drug or this type of resentment, whichever, I harm myself. I don't need to do that. Self defeating, right? That person. The second, yeah, you can visualize a uh, compassionate um, part of Buddhism. But uh, again, when we let go or use the wisdom to cut off a type of um, envy or resentment, is the way that we have ourselves first before we, we let go or forgive that person. That's the common. So that's the reason why we need to let go, why we need to, to forgive that person. Again, but sometimes uh, if that person has intention to repeat again, um, they may take advantage of us, right? Oh, you're so nice. You, you Like the mother, right? <laughs> the children, they keep making mistakes and you, okay, don't worry about that. Okay, I forgive you and so forth. But sometimes you need to stop them too. So that they know they need to stop. Otherwise, they keep follow the pattern. Otherwise, we may fall into that trap again. And depend upon this, our skill, or depend upon uh, the level of our patient too. Of course, if your parents, like you love them so much, and yes, they're still young, they, are, they don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, this is supposed to give them, but at least to, to guide them, to teach them. But for other people, if it's too much, it's better to, to stay away. Mm. and not to break the condition for them to break that kind of mistake again. Yeah, you, can, you can be a very forgiving person, but also still have those clear boundaries. Yeah, that's about we step back right? yeah. Yeah. and don't, say, give, don't um, give that person the These chance. are things I'm willing to engage in. These are things I'm not willing to engage in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's many, many, many practical ways. Yeah, but no matter what, when we forgive others, this means keep ourselves. When we let go of all the misery, this means we let go of our job, our, um, our resentment, our anger here. Yeah. And plus, on the top of not the reason that everyone makes mistakes, or everyone, no one profits. Uh, sometimes people may make mistakes unintentionally, and sometimes even intentionally. But of course, we have been patient for one time, two times, three times. Even up to 10 times, but never times you need to stop. <laughs> to tell them, or at least if it's too much, step away. Yeah, so, so that's many ways to, to approach that. Again, that's what I'm here uh, for him to say that. At first, we need to make the reason why, why we, we do, why we want to transform that type of mental vision. And that's after reasoning, we have the wisdom to cut it out or transform it. Mm. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Becca, you might read number nine, please. That's a lot of terms. You have the uh, Becca. Um, so what Nagasena is the characteristic mark of virtue? Supporting a king, for it is the basis of all good qualities, the five controlling faculties and the five moral powers, the seven factors of enlightenment, the eight factors of the noble path, the four foundations of mindfulness, the four rights, the four right efforts, the four bases of success, the four absorptions, the eight freedoms, the four modes of concentration, and the eight great attainments. This sounds Each of, too okay. much. Okay. Yeah. No. That's too much, right? All right, go back here. Mm, thank you. You recognize some of these from uh, Baker or some of this definition? No. You recognize them? No? That's mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we may spend weeks and months to discuss about each of them, right? But it's first, yeah, go ahead. Uh, is that the first time you ever read this type of poems? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so these are the qualities, right? The five controlling faculties, confidence, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. Yeah, we may talk about that. Mm -hmm. And five moral power, the same. Uh, the seven factors of enlightenment. That's a lot. Mindfulness, investigation, energy, and so forth. We, I think we have, later on, we have time to come back one by one. The four powders and uh, mindfulness, we started before, right? Mm -hmm. the, um, the mindfulness of the body, the mindfulness of the feeling, and the mindfulness of the mind, and the mindfulness of the phenomena. That's for foundation. You heard about this before? This first time ever, right? <clears throat> that, that's a bit less. And uh, before right effort in the 19 here, effort to prevent and remove unwholesome states and to develop and maintain the wholesome state. Hmm. So that's the four, four types, the four base of success. Uh, eagerness, energy, energy, wisdom, uh, four stage uh, for absorb. Absorption, project of one fullness, jiha. That's the state of um, meditative state of mind when you do meditation. Okay. A wisdom, uh, I, sorry, a freedom, a state that releases the mind by intense concentration. Uh, the four modes of concentration meditation, the love, from compassion, sympathy, joys. Sympathy choice and equanimity. We discussed before. Do you have a way to just email email us a list just like that? Yeah, in the attachment. In the it, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I send it. Did you get that for the whole file? Oh uh, yeah, I have the whole book. The whole book. Uh, is that the whole book? Mm -hmm. okay. That's included. Okay. That, that, that's it. They they spend in the in the uh, the north end here. Yeah. Uh, I would much sure to send to you. If you can give me after this okay. the email, I can send to you the eight, uh, the eight great um, attainment. That's number twenty-four. Yeah. So that's a big list. Yeah. Four formulas of jhana. Four formulas of four forms of uh, jhana. This is the meditative state of mind. That's, that's a big list. I right? always do this first. Yeah. It would be nice to have a graphic of those lists. Yeah, okay, in here, right? They, they put the list here. Yeah. Mm. Just say, you know how you have some of the PowerPoint graphics. Oh, okay. I'm just saying that would be, that would be nice to have that. Mm. You okay. Wanted to see that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, you like to you like to use this each each of these has virtue as it support and it builds on its foundation all the good conditions and not the speech. Give me an illustration. The dust of things, all forms of animal and plant life flourish with the earth and the soil. So does the virtue, the virtue support, develops the five controlling faculties and so on. And this was said by the Buddha. When a wise man established one virtue without concentration and understanding, then as a teacher, artist and sagacious, he succeeds in disentangling this tangle. Mm. You know, Westman is the Fusa, you know, Westman, mm -hmm. yeah, the one who stayed in seclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Vivian, you like to read the verses, please? Vivian? Okay. Yeah. Um, is the, just when a wise man? Yeah. Okay. When a wise man established well in virtue, develops concentration and understanding, then as a bhikkhu, ardent and sagacious, he succeeds in disentangling this tangle. Mm, you know what does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah, can you summarize what's the meaning of this verse? You understand this? I think 
if a person is like has a foundation in their virtue from that foundation they can develop the practice of concentration and compassion and understanding mm. and can like untangle something <laughs> let's mean tangle what's mean the, this, the this tangle mean. of i guess delusion ignorance yeah yeah disengage people in pain through the tangle right yeah this integrated the yeah that's it mm -hmm. mm. okay thank you yeah uh ben you might to read please number 10 please ben okay um what is the characteristic of confidence clarification inspiration as confidence springs up in the mind it breaks through the veil of the five hindrances and the mind becomes clear serene and undisturbed. Thus, confidence clarifies. Inspiration is the mark when the meditator, perceiving how the mind others have been set free, aspires to the attainment of what he has not yet reached, to the experience of what he has not yet felt, and the real realization of what he has not yet understood, for this was said by the blessed one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Can you summarize, please? Mm. <laughs> Clear. Mm. It, it is talk. I'll have to go through it again. It is talking about becoming clear through mm. meditation. That's that's all that I'm getting on that. So he asked about what the correct is mark of confidence, right? How could we get confident? Yeah. Clarification and inspiration. Yeah. If we had that type of inspiration to work in like um, in meditation and it's be clear for us to do our practice. So we can have confidence in ourselves. If if our path is not clear, if we don't have that type of inspiration, there's no way for us to believe in ourselves. Yeah. Like the teacher, right? Or pressure. We, when we try to explain to them and if we don't explain clearly, we don't feel confident to do the work. But if we explain to them clearly, step by step, how they're supposed to do the work, they, they have the confidence to do the work. But that's a clarification uh, and inspiration. You need to inspire them. Right. So don't worry. Uh, if you uh, um, finish uh, this work and you get an A, so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know the five hindrances? It's that anger, hatred, greed, sloth, Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. I, can spend, <laughs> yeah. So I like I like my list. <laughs> uh, yeah. You like your list? Hi, William. How you been? I've been well. I've been well. Thank you. One more time. Anger, hatred, greed. Sloth and torpor. Mm -hmm. Doubt? Yeah, probably. Yeah, doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> why? Why is this? The, why do you consider as the, um, the mental hindrance? Because when you're meditating, that's, that's what comes up and often keeps you mm -hmm. from being clear. So if you're if you're confident and you know how those things arise and um, how to not have those things disturb your meditation mm -hmm. um, and you gain confidence through your experience with the connection. Yeah, we know, right? When we have too much anger, right? Block our mind, block our wisdom. If we have so much craving, right? The same. If we're not clear with this, yeah, block our mind. And if we feel sleepy, right? And the last one, doubt. Yeah, you have so much doubt. There's no, there's no way for us to do anything. But in Zen tradition, they say that uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the last doubt you may have, the easy for you to, uh, to have, um, to attain great wisdom. If you have small doubt, you attain 
it's more wisdom. You have great doubt, you have great wisdom. You hear about that, uh, William, in, in Zen tradition? You heard about that? No, I haven't. No? <laughs> you heard about that? No. The doubt here in Zen tradition is quite different from, from our conventional doubt that we talk about. Okay, the doubt, okay. I don't know whether I can sit uh, here or not. That conventional doubt, right? No more doubt. I don't know that I can um, calm my mind and so forth. But the doubt in Zen tradition is quite different. The doubt in Zen tradition is like, okay, uh, the teacher, the master, give uh, what they call Kong An, right? Or the, or the, uh, the you can say the, the question, the, the, the question for the student to think about. Uh, let's say, um, uh, what was your face before you were born? You understand that? We talk about this, right, William, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. With that comment, right? What was your face before you were born? Here, the master didn't talk about the physical face. They talk about the original mind. You need to have that type of doubt. You have to cling on that type of question until one day, you recognize as a member of the story of Newton, he sat under the, the apple tree, someone apple chop on his head, and boom, he recognized the, the, the law of gravitation. So sometimes I'll lie, oh, oh I, when you think of something, oh, um, I don't know. It, 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 I cannot solve that puzzle. But one day, oh, yes. Well, I, th I think the difference is the, the doubt that's the hindrance is the is the ne is negative doubt this isn't mm -hmm. going to turn out this is is putting a negative spin on it versus mm -hmm. maybe zen doubt is question is is the question the, the contact mm -hmm. of the question itself mm -hmm. not it's not based mm -hmm. on sort of a, in an outcome or the doubting mm -hmm. mind is mm -hmm. is uh, yeah like if you're a professor, right? Sometimes you give the, the students some controversial question, right? Think about that. Not the doubt there, but to make them to think, to make them to recognize why, why they have that type of problems. And when they recognize, oh, they understand what we're talking about. That's different from, if we say, the negative uh, doubt. Is that right, uh, William? You recognize, right? You remember, right? That type of doubt in, in Zen tradition now, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So you understand now in Zen tradition, the small doubt, uh, the little doubt you, you may have, you may gain some little wisdom. The red doubt you may have, you then you gain more great wisdom. Again, it's the party way. Right? Sometimes if you make uh, a test, right? Um, um, the, the answer would not be would not come from the books, but from, from the student intuition. You give them that type of um, incentive, right? To think about, to test the wisdom there. That's a doubt there. And this intuition too. So the master give that type of um, what we call Kongan so that mm -hmm. um, the student hold on until one day. Uh, so, right. Yeah, one day the, the apple will chop. Recognize <laughs> 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 that. So that's different. Yeah, yeah. And I, um, I, I love that. I love that type of story. And actually, um, that's just that's the question of. Uh, I think I, I mentioned before. You, will you remember the background of the story? Uh, I think I talked about it before, right? The background of the story that one master uh, told um, if one student came up and the master asked him. What was your face before you were born? Right, you remember the background of the story. Remember that? Was it was it the one the cat? No, that's different. That's, that's different. not. That's a different one. <clears throat> no, I don't. I don't remember the background of that. So one. The background is, is this one man, one monk. He liked to uh, lecture and mm, write the commentaries for the Diamond Sutra, the Diamond Sutra, mm -hmm. right? And he he proud that. But when he came to see the, the Zen master, and he, he doubted about this Zen master. He, he asked, what's the meaning of Zen? 
So the master asked, uh, asked him back, what was your face before you were small? And what, guess what? He went back and shot for <laughs> oh, that's, that's answer, right? From the books, from the sutra, uh, so on until he gave up. Because no answer, no, no books could answer that type of question, uh, call what happened. And he brought everything that he brought before. And he went to the mountain to do the practice of meditation. And one day, when he used, you know, the hole, right, to, to, um, to dig the hole, to, to cut away so that he, he could plant um, the vegetables there. When, and he, when he hold that, you know, the hole, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so when he, he used, he hold that he hole and dig down the, uh, the earth or the ground, it hit to the rock. And man, and he recognized that. Of course, we, we don't know what's, what did he recognize. So he went back to see that master and say, yeah, I recognize your question. You understand now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand why? Why he recognized that? Because there is no sound without the hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's your, the Buddha nature is the, is the, it's there. Is, is always there. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that's your, face before you're born but he only recognized it because i guess it was so quiet quiet there's there's nothing to hear nothing to hear. we hit and, the route right yeah. you make the noise right yeah so that that is the um the con there for them to think about anyway so because of this i get what to give you this story right <laughs> So um, you can give them more controversial uh, questions <laughs> <laughs> to make them think, right? To make them think, so to uh, trigger their wisdom, to trigger their, their aspiration to learn. Otherwise, it's boring, right? Mm -hmm. If you just give them the homework, it always is so boring. That's why we give them a test. Uh, so I remember that um, when I was young, I think the, the third grade or the fourth grade, my math teacher, every day, when he went to the class, he would give us some type of, we can say that the test, or a short test of math. And he would give the extra credit for that. And this, it triggered the interest of the student to learn more. Then, okay, you, you gotta learn this and that. So I, I, I learned from that type of, um, of incentive as a, doc, as a teacher, even as a parent, right? Sometimes, Sometimes you, sometimes they approach you and ask mom, dad, what's, what happened? What is that? What's, so you come back to them, you think about that, right? If we let them to think, they spend more time to think about whether they mistake or whichever they, they want to, to search for or, they, or whichever curiosity they may have. So that when they recognize, oh, they remember you your lesson more than you say everything up front. Mm. Well, William, you give that type of, um, of, uh, uh, of question to your daughters, um, ask her to, uh, to ask herself some question that they, uh, she ask you? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I think I probably need to do uh, an even a better job of that, but uh... Yeah, sometimes I'll try to I'll try to get her to think. She, she's a little resistant to it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I think that's why I don't do it as much because she's um, she won't necessarily stick with it. Oh, she's, really? She's, she's still just seven, um, so there's still time. How about your children? Do you sometimes you give that that type of uh, incentive? Yeah, we can all if you can figure out the answer, what do you think? Why do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In education, it's knowledge is, mm -hmm. is given to the knowledge, the answer. Yeah. And explain to them the why they know. Mm -hmm. Instead of me explaining to them. That's the point. Mm -hmm. As much as we give them the chance to fight their own answer, it lasts long for them. Mm -hmm. Then we stand and explain to them from beginning to the end, they may forget. <laughs> because it's not come from their own mind. It's not come from their own thinking or, or their own fighting. So again, that's a doubt. It's different to pick down mm -hmm. doubt. So we understand that, right? Yeah, it's inspiration 
same thing. Because competent clarifying, if we know inspiration is the mark of when meditators perceiving how the mind order have been set free. Mm, so I, we, ha we have aspiration that someone have attained some type of um, enlightenment, awakening, right? And so we follow that. We, uh, yeah, we, uh, we recognize as uh, some people in the past, they have done that. They recognize they have a kind of awakening so we can follow. Um, okay, you feel like this, please? Yeah. Um, mm. My confidence. My confidence crosses over. That visions this life. By steadfastness, all creatures disturb. Our physical beings should. Okay, let's let us talk about that. Let's just see. Mm, yeah. It's understandable, right? Mm, confident. Uh, can you summarize? Confident across the over the the. The flood, right? Yeah. The flood is that represent the hindrance or obstruction, right? By vigilance, the sea of life. Because we 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 practice uh, continuously. Yeah. Where we can uh, purify our mind to have wisdom. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, William, can you, can you read the next number 11, please? Yes. What, venerable sir, is the characteristic mark of energy? Reinforcing, O King, so that those good qualities which it supports do not fall away. Give me an illustration. Just as, O king, when his army has been broken up by a larger one, the king would call to mind every possible ally to reinforce his army and break up the large army. Thus reinforcing is the mark of energy, for this was said by the Blessed One. Hmm. Yeah, can, can you summarize, please? Yeah, so the uh, King uh, Melinda is asking about, about what is the meaning of energy. And, and um, here the, the response is that Nagasena says that uh, it's, to, it's reinforcing good qualities. And the example he gives is that of the army, where if the king's army is broken up, he'll call allies to reinforce it to help defeat the larger army that broke it up. So that um, energy is a, you know, in a sense, that's like a, it's like a degree of persistence mm. in that we don't, we don't uh, give up when there's some sort of difficulty or resistance, but that we draw on our resources and um, aren't, uh, you know, that we're not deterred by some obstacle, but we, you know, we draw in what, what we're able to, so that we can overcome the obstacle. Hmm. Yeah, in the, in the spiritual path, it's not easy. It's not easy to um, to recognize uh, that type of energy, right? And sometimes, especially uh, when we do meditation, how could we have how can, how could we gather energy to sit there for a long? Uh, uh, I have uh, the mindfulness class with my student. And uh, at the end of um, last month, uh, I have four hours to sit with them. No, we didn't sit straight for hours. No, <laughs> it's scared of, no. I, I broke up, I broke half a part. So I, I guide them to do one minute at a time and then reach by another minute and so forth. So at first they do one minute, and second, uh, later on they do two minutes, now it's time to do three, four, and up to five. And uh, even the, with that kind of breaking up times, it takes a lot of times, yeah, for me to guide them. And uh, do standing meditation, walking meditation, uh, body scan, you know, body scan, right? And 
you know Western body scan, right? The body scan. You know, yeah. Western, we lie down, right? We lie down to scan our body physically and mentally. And even eating meditation, it, 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 it takes up the four hours uh, too. So uh, again, uh, with, with inspiration that, that everyone can do the practice meditation, can transform the mind. So we can gather energy to do that. Otherwise, not easy. And of course, we need to have a support model too. Like, um, so usually you stay at home to do by yourself, or, or, or you do together with them online. Or it's, 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 it's like over Zoom. So I guess it's kind of like being in that group gives me the motivation to do it. It gets boring. I don't know. Yeah, by yourself. Do it by, right? my, by myself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why we, we have to have a group support. Yeah, even the children, right? During the COVID nineteen, they they get stuck at home. It's boring for them to learn, and some of them they fail. But when they get back to the normal schedule, they they learn more because of the group, the inspiration of the group, the group support. You don't have energy there. It's so important. It's like here, uh, they reinforce uh, his army. And break up the last one, uh, all makers that what kind of energy there. Yeah. And um, this has happened everywhere in any circumstances. Yeah. Would you like to read yeah, this verse, please? Okay. Uh, the energetic noble disciple, O monks, puts away unwholesomeness, cultivates good, sons the blameworthy, develops the blameless. He does as he keeps his mind pure. Who is that? Is you understand the meaning? Uh, to me, uh, it's like when like the unwholesomeness, like thoughts or whatever come up, you can let those go, mm -hmm. and kind of like if you let those go, it leaves room for the good thoughts to come in. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like. We were talking kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the, um, the reason and the wisdom. You hold on to, to your, your mind and cut away the things that are not good. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, I'm thinking about the, uh, the thing we talked the last time, the CBT. Mm -hmm. right? If uh, someone has so much depression, right? That's when they, they think so much in the negative way. So in the CBT, they push it. Okay, don't think about negative. Just think about positive. To replace those thoughts, to make room for the positive thought um, to take. Uh, shun the blame worthy and develop the blameless. Because uh, does he keep this mind pure? Did you recognize us? So this is the basic level, mm -hmm. right? You replace the policy with the negative. You stop, right? You right. stop the negative. That you that you learn to recognize what the unwholesome states of mm -hmm. mind are, and that you cultivated certain practices mm -hmm. for the good for these better qualities and mm -hmm. wholesome states and. Uh, mm -hmm. But also does it with some compat, you know, also does it with some compassion and forgiveness, um, you know, and that's the important thing. It's not, mm -hmm. oh, it's this fault or that fault, that, mm -hmm. that it's a release. It's a release of all of that mm -hmm. and just to understand that you have the place and have these uh, more wholesome mm -hmm. states. Of, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Stephen, right? It's just understandable, right? It's just easy, especially as a parents, right? We would say that uh, if our children make mistake, right? You need to change that mistake into the good one, not the replacement. Right, and Steve? Uh, yes, more content. That is correct. Mm -hmm. About Baker, it's understandable, right? It's, it's, clear. it's, just, it's the basic one, right? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, because this one, it's part of the rap revolution. We should talk more about this, this basic level. When we talk about Mahayana, when we talk about the mindfulness practice, this will be done.
go beyond the fighting of good and bad. Just accept that. Wholesome and unwholesome state. Yeah, go beyond that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, mm. let's, let's move on then. Oh, okay. This is the same thing. Yeah. And uh, Stephen, yeah, please uh, can you read the number 12, please? What, Nagasena, is the characteristic mark of mindfulness? Noting and keeping in mind, as mindfulness springs up in the mind of the recluse, he repeatedly notes the wholesome and the and unwholesome, blameless and blameworthy, insignificant and important, dark and light qualities, and those that resemble them thinking. Or the four foundations of mindfulness, these, the four right efforts, these, the four bases of success, these, the five. Yeah, this here. Oh. It's still there, and Stephen? My mind is a little bit. Yeah, my, uh, my uh, screen was frozen, so I didn't see anything. My apology. Okay. Let's... My video to a skew. Not quite sure because of my internet connection. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, control. <laughs> I think it was the uh, stuff from controlling faculties. These, the five moral powers. These, the seven factors of enlightenment. These. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So we probably slow in the net. Uh, uh, anyway, so Becca, you understand? You understand this passage? Uh, when you talk about um, uh, mindfulness, the categories of mindfulness, you understand this passage, Becca? I think I understand the basics, yes. Hmm. Uh, Ben, do you understand this? Yes, I'm, I'm starting to get it. Um, I'm seeing um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, like very distinct numbers, like the four noble truths, mm. eight paths, uh, like a very uh, regimented. Mm. But then it, it's getting into um, it's getting into where you're having balance in your thoughts, like you're you're contemplating the the negative thoughts or the, what you might classify as like the bad thoughts. And then uh, thinking about, well, what's, what's the wholesome part of this? What's, uh, what's the goodness in this? How can I, uh, how can I find balance in my mind mm. and let it reflect into my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, William? What do you think, William? Uh, why someone does meditation, those cup of Theories and principles pop up in their mind. Is that have destruction or they get followed through? What do you think? Well, <clears throat> uh, the fourth foundation of mindfulness is the dharmas. So being mindful of, of the dharmas while we're practicing meditation is it's not bad, just like mindful of of any sort of thinking that arises or feelings or of the physical perception of the body um so long as we're if we if we like if we're meaning to practice mindfulness and we find ourselves starting to think about them mm -hmm. and like kind of analyze and contemplate well if we're really being mindful, then ideally we, we kind of, we let that go. We let go that active pursuit of some sort of line of thinking. Um, unless we're contemplating because they're kind of distinct practices in my understanding, but know them, you know, coming up, being reminded of those dharmas, I think is a, I think is a good thing when those are coming to mind because it means that we have been, We've we've kind of brought them into our mind, and they're they're appearing when appropriate. But what happened if we have so much of them in our mind? How could we concentrate? How could we calm our mind? If it's so much principle, 
Oh, I remember what the phone number two and so forth and so forth now my mind. So how could I concentrate my mind and how could I calm down my mind? Well, my mindfulness, mindfulness is walk and I know I am walking, breathe and I know I am breathing. So, so really uh, from a Theravada perspective, this is, that, that all goes pretty much in order of, of the way the Satipatthana Sutta is mm. written, which Sati means remembering. Mm. So mindfulness, which so so that's the dis, that's the discourse on mindfulness. So which what the gist is: walk, and I know I'm walking; breathe, I know I'm breathing. Mm. Mm. You follow the idea around well, this context, right? So whichever pop in our mind, get recognized, not analyze it. That's a <laughs> yeah. trick. Yeah. You understand that? That's a trick there. Yeah. That's kind of verb knowing. Yeah, the knowing, that's all. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, like uh, when you drink water, oh, we can notice, I know I'm drinking. But if you analyze, oh, this is good water, this bad one, water. Yeah, maybe I'll have a little bit later to be more. You can start with adult thinking. That's why it's not in there. It's so important with that type of mindfulness. So, so that's why I ask that if we, if we think too much, I mean, if we analyze those principles too much, we get lost our concentration. But if we just recognize, okay, we learn a lot, right? We learn a lot from the books and we learn a lot from our conversation and so forth. When we sit there, oh, one thought pop up, oh, um, I have a thought about compassion. Okay, I know that, right? I have a thought of anger. I know that. I have a thought of um, uh, jealousy. I know that and so forth. With the knowing, that is mindfulness. If we fall into trouble, oh, I'm angry because he's done wrong on me and so forth. We fall into that trap and, and we go back to the circle of, of resentment of the negative uh, feeling that we may have with that people. So that's so important, right? Not in, but before that, before we have the, the skill to recognize them, we have to have the, the uh, concentration of uh, the focusing skill. Otherwise, it's not easy. We will pull, pull away from those conversations, what they call in the chat, in the chatting, right? In the, in the script, or even in the script of our our knowledge about Buddhism too, or whichever knowledge that we may have, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why in Buddhism, we have to be careful. If we don't recognize us, we play around with that type of under thinking and we fall in the trap of um, those thoughts, right? And William, right? It's a little different, right, William? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so what happened when, when somehow we have uh, mm, the happy to pattern to analyze this while we're sitting there, how could we stop them? How could we recognize that we could recognize them instead of falling the trap of analyzing them? And practical sense, how, how could we do that then? Mm. You understand my question, William? Mm. Yes, yes. How, how, how could we stay away from analyzing those thoughts? Well, I mean, I think it's in the beginning of practicing meditation and being in a neutral where we're not pursuing anything. Yeah, I think it's very difficult because we're so used to trying to do something. Mm. So usually we do something simple for our focus, like counting the breathing. With my understanding being that ultimately we, we will progress to let go of any special effort and simply like rest in the mindfulness of what is and you know included in that could be you know awareness of breathing um, but you know we eventually can let go of even the counting but in the beginning we need to we need to give our minds something to do and we just keep it simple so the you know the breath but some people use other focuses for their meditation and then whenever we notice that we have, we're pursuing something or we've been distracted, then 
we really just need to redirect back to our breathing. And it's a, it's, I mean, the redirection is completely, it's so easy. It's just like, if I decide to pick up my, my hand and touch my nose, that's all we have to do to redirect our, our mind. We don't need to, you know, beat ourselves up for what we were thinking about. We don't need to figure it out. We don't need to make a plan on how to prevent it. We just come back to our focus. Um, so, and then the, the tricky thing is if something's particularly charged and we kind of want to keep thinking about it. Um, and those, we just need to kind of see things clearly and, and, and know that, you know, well, this is a time when I'm practicing meditation and I can think about that later. And we just, you know, we let it go and redirect our, fo our focus. Yeah, yeah, that's different, right? We used to follow the pattern of analyzing things, right? Whichever thing people think, whichever thing people say, we're not, oh, okay, that person says something good and bad and so far about me. We fall that trap. Like this lies come about. When we, we analyze, oh, they, they talk good about me, oh, I feel good. When they talk bad about me, I feel bad and so forth. That we fall in the trap of analyzing, um, which bring uh, to have the, uh, the mental fluctuation. We get used of that. So now in meditation, it helps us to reverse the pattern, not to react right away, but to calm the mind first and be observed. Like we talk about the um, ICT, right? Mm -hmm. ICT and um, uh, yeah, and then the uh, MB, uh, MBSR, be observed. Step back, right? So disengage ourselves with the circumstances so that we can see things more clearly. Uh, then to react on the spot. It's not easy, it takes time mm -hmm. until we calm our mind enough. We can see things more clear. All right, so thank you. It's time up now. Yeah, please uh, uh, come back on this Sunday. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so yeah thank you. Yeah. Wow.